We actually have our backstage in our procedure room with Dr. Warden and board certified dermatologist, Dr. Sonia Batra, as well as physician's assistant, Joanne. Welcome to everyone. We're all here and we really enjoyed that proof. <laughs> we learned a lot. But Susan is here. As you can see, we're going to take care of Susan's bumps. In fact, she has two of them. They're, they're a little different. But she's going to leave without them and should fix it once and for all. Dr. Batra, tell us what you're going to do. Well, Susan actually has two bumps, as you mentioned, so I'd like to show them to you. Um, as you can see, the one on the right is a little bit more white and a little bit more firm. And this is actually something called an oral fibroma. And this is scar tissue that arises under the surface of the skin, usually from trauma. On the other side, you see the slightly more translucent, soft bump. And Susan had mentioned to me that she bit her lip. And this is called a mucosal. This arises from trauma to the salivary gland. And what happens is when there's minor trauma to the gland, the, the duct gets disrupted and it accumulates mucin under the surface of the skin. So while they sometimes go away on their own, they don't always. And we certainly don't want you to take a needle and try to pop it. No, don't, don't be your own oral surgeon on these things. What do you say we remove these for Susan? Absolutely. Want... So when they don't Good go idea. away on their own. You don't have to talk. It's OK. <laughs> the treatment of choice is to go ahead but and excise them. People don't realize that they have all these little minor salivary glands lining their mouth. And this is exact. It's like a cyst usually from some sort of trauma. And uh, the other, very nice. I think you can see that she's making a nice little elliptical cut around it, so she's going to get all of that cyst out. Exactly. And so interestingly, these actually have a little capsule that's sort of gelatinous under the surface of the skin. And you want to take that with it so it doesn't come back. Correct. And we often even try to take the feeder uh, part of the duct so that it doesn't reaccumulate. So Dr. Botcher made that elliptical incision around the cyst, and she's getting ready to snip it off, including the capsule. And actually, I should probably have mentioned that we numbed Susan before we started today. Good point. If you hadn't, Susan would be. Yeah. Uh, so this is not something you want to do those without feet that a little anesthetic. Bit. And so we just basically go right under the cyst. You can see we got and it all, and hopefully we got even a little bit of that feeder duct. Yeah. And so now it's very clean bed. You can see a little of the lip musculature. Exactly. So as, as Dr. Orden pointed out, this is just a little bit of the muscle there. And we're just going to very gently use a little heat source called cautery just to seal it so that it doesn't bleed. Because sometimes the muscle has a little bit of blood vessels to it. And so again, she's numb, so she's not feeling this. And then we put in two dissolvable stitches. And she should be healed up really nicely within a week. So dissolvable stitches, put a couple of those in, they'll fall out on their own, right? Exactly, exactly. And then as you can see, it'll come back together as a little fine line here. Are you going to do the fibroma as well today? I'd be happy to, absolutely. That way she yeah. goes back well, Susan's here, why bump not? free. So that would be very nice for her. Hopefully when she heals up, it'll heal in as a little fine line. And interestingly, the mucosa of the lip tends to heal really beautifully and really I'll quickly. I'll never see it. So she and you're going to stick around and do it. some other skin stuff with us, right? Exactly, yes. Well, thank you very, very much, Dr. Batra.